Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from My Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another 100% vanilla ship, and this one is a beauty. Now this is the SS Destiny by Goldshell, and the first thing I will say and warn you about this ship, if Goldshell is not a DJ, or just a master of rave lighting, then you should definitely look for a job in that industry because the lighting on this ship is a little bit eccentric, but I love it. You can see we've got these domes up at the top acting as skylights, and you can see how we circle the lights around them, and from a distance, just look at that as it pulses away. It looks so cool. Let's zoom back in. We'll begin with a bit of an exterior tour like we do, and then we'll break into the belly of the beast. I'll show you just how it works. So you can see we've got some more crazy lighting at the bottom, some warning, so when you're about to crush someone, they can die with a nice drum and bass rave. No, I'm just joking. But we'll start at the front. You can see we've got this lovely assault ramp. So the idea of this is it's to land and take off and transport smaller ships between and on planets as well. So we've got a landing gear holding that up. It looks like a very secure system as well as we've got the advanced armor blocks there. Well, the heavy blast doors and we've got a combination of thrusters as well as look at this this sneaky little fellow has decided to stick some rocket launchers under here as well and a camera to aim them the whole of this ship has been really well thought out for both atmospheric and space flight as well so we come into the first of the two large hangar bays we've got this round sort of opening and on the top there's just so much detail you can see he's added little curve blocks as well as oxygen generators and he's really trying to plan this for survival as well and then we've got the skylights looking into the larger hangars I, I won't explore too much inside but you can just see what them skylights are doing and underneath we have a sort of reverse function where we've got the hydrogen thrusters that'll help us land safely with the red lights around them so you don't get burned to death and we've got these sort of extended pods that remind me a bit of like a quadricopter and these help it to hover when it's in atmospheric sort of flight mode and we've gone to the second hangar now more solar panels really well thought out for survival and coming to the back here got a little bit of this is where the ship actually thins out and i like this area here thins out gives a bit of viewing area and then it extends back into the rear sort of thrust pack where we've got these large engines towards the rear now let's actually just look closely down here and you'll be able to notice that it's actually a rotor built in or is it a rotor that is the question i believe it is now this rotor helps with vertical takeoff so you can see that this thruster cell actually rotates up and down, applying more pressure and more force when taking off or landing. So that can be very useful indeed. And as we come to the back, you can see we've got a little bit of a signpost, rear airlock. And these airlocks are all over the place, perfect for a survival ship because you need to get in and sometimes you can't be asked walking around the back. I'm not even going to go in there. I've just, te I've just teased you with what is inside. Let's go and have a look at the bridge as well. He's created the bridge and he's created some antennas as well by using them half-constructed blocks. And on top, we've got a little bit of a laser antenna. But first off, let me switch back to my body and we'll go inside. So we're going to go in through the bridge airlock. You can see these doors have been automated. And he's automated these really easily just by using the sensor block. So you can see everything is actually labeled. He's a navigation officer, drone control center. And each one of these seats has everything wired up to it. And I just love that feature. But watch this. This is one of my favorite features I've ever seen on a ship, and I think it'll be yours too. We walk forward, we step into this area, this control panel opens up. Now, I do apologize, there's a lot more numbers and digits that show up here, but sometimes when you blueprint them in, they don't always show up though, so that's a little bit annoying. But you can see just some of the ideas, what he's done. He's actually showed you the hotkeys for the hydrogen iron thrusters, vertical takeoff mode, and it's all really easy to press. We can sit back into the cockpit, and you can see them really easily on the side. And even better, when you walk away from it, it closes back up as well. Just, just how sweet that is. And I even missed out since I was so amazed by that. We've got a little LCD screens on both sides giving our information, our drunk drive, location, and so on. So it's just a really well-planned out cockpit. And you can see the lights flashing on and off as well as I'm walking in and out of sensory range. We've got a med bay on the top floor. It just goes into so much detail, but we'll pop this up and we'll go down to the lower deck. So this airlock actually pops us down into one of the engine bays where you can see the engine bay is actually spinning below us. Just look how cool that looks. We've also got the in aspect in uh, our in English atmospheric thrusters down the side being lit up by all these flashing lights. It's a bit like a rave in here, but I forgive that. It's just a really cool area to actually work in. We've got lots of glass, lots of lighting. We'll just fly along to the end here. We've got two little cells here that act as repair modules for when they rotate. We'll pop back out of there. And you can see we've got another access to the floor below. So we'll just sprint down here. I'll try to say speed up a walking pace. There's just so much to explore. We've got cryo beds again. And once we have this central engine core that seems to be rotating, not really a super functional purpose, but duh, damn, it does look cool, doesn't it? Especially with the blue lights flickering away. You'd have to see. I, I, my personal opinion would that this would go absolutely crazy if you attempted anything multiplayer with it. But 
he's thought about that and that's why he's got a little bit of a lock up there so when you're in transport you can actually stop your engine from spinning as well and that's the rear air lock that we came in through before let's keep going shall we this has got we've got a lot to see and a lot of amazing lighting to actually show you so as we continue through to this area we enter into this little catwalk just watch the light how it pulses on we walk through we can look around we can see the planet below if there was one there's um earth down there to our left we've got some more thrusters and we've got another automatic airlock. The automatic airlock is just so much more relaxing than pressing buttons, I'll tell you that. As we come in here, you see the light comes on again. We've got a repair sensor up at the top, as well as these beautiful windows into everything. You can just see what's going on on the outside. So we'll pop an airlock, shall we? And you can see it's labeled the airlocks as well. Lights on, welders, open and close hangar doors. So three and four, if that's the one we want. Let me just double check that. Open hangar bay one. Okay, lights have gone out. I may have mispressed something. Oh, there, hang on, I think... What have we done? I've broken it! Okay, um, open and close bay one. Oh, there we go, no, it was just a warning. Wow, the new sounds they've got in Space Engineers as well have just made it so much more cool. You can see the lights have actually gone out in here as well. And there we go, we've got that massive airlock to bring our smaller ships into. But we'll seal that up and we'll go into the next airbay. So, airbay, hangar see all that door up there you see we've got a nice bit of flashing the sound effects do add to a lot of the detail in the ship I make mean, you just drop your jaw in excitement and amazement so we're now we're in hangar bay 2 we've got the same sort of setup we've got the same sort of lights this just reminds me of something from star citizen warning hangar bay 1 is open so you can see just the detail has gone into with these signs as well make sure you know what's going on so we can seal that up we can open these doors up and this ramp here is actually access to the front of the ship so let's pop that hangar bay 1 lights open Let's um let's pop hangar bay two, shall we, while we're at it? So here you go, you can see we're opening up hangar bay two. We've got access to the front ramp there. And we also have access to the side hangars. So we're in the main ramp room. Let's open this up. We've got the ramp. Hit the button. There we go, it's as simple as that. The ramp drops down. We can release our ships, our small rovers. Just really cool. It's a great piece of design, this. And it works just so smooth. The the downside to it is it does have a lot of timer blocks to make this function correctly. I, I do tell you, there's so many systems going on in here that there's a lot that can go wrong as well. But you are sacrificing that sort of functionality for the looks, the features, and the crazy amount of abilities that this ship does have. It's definitely something you should check out. I'm not going to attempt to fly this because when I did attempt to fly it before, the little cockpit seat ripped out and I felt very bad. So I do bear this in mind, it's more of a showpiece at the moment. But I'd like to thank you guys for watching and definitely check this ship out on the workshop even if it's just for a bit of a tour.